Well, good morning, afternoon, and evening, wherever you may be. Welcome to another edition of Select Sires Facebook Live. I'm Kevin Jorgensen, part of the Sire Development Team here at Select Sires, along with my colleague, Rick Verbeek. And we're uh, very excited to spend the next few minutes visiting with you about the December Sire Summaries and uh, a lot of great information about new graduates, previous graduates, some very exciting new young bulls to talk about. So. We've got a lot of data to go through and, and uh, we're going to try to move as quickly as possible. As always, if you have questions, just always uh, type those in. We'll get to them as we can as we're going through the presentation, but we want this to be a two-way street and enjoy uh, answering the questions that you may have uh, for, for us. Um, when we look at the December 2020 uh, proof summaries, uh, it was a really good, um, good week again in that uh, I can get my slides to advance. Um, we had uh, a great day in in uh, in uh, being able to uh, have these uh, high rankings again, as we're used to. Uh, certainly, um, feel good about uh, the opportunities that we'll have to, to share this information. When it comes to rankings, as you become accustomed to high rank as far as TPI and net merit, DWP, no matter what it is, we had a marvelous day. And I'll summarize it really quickly in that data matters. I think the, the message of this sire summary is data matters. When you look at the amount of data that a lot of our bulls added, when you think about bulls like Frazzled with 8,000 daughters in their proof and still ranking in the top 10 for net merit, when you've got bulls that can do so many things right, that's just extremely exciting to be able to uh, have those bulls that have stood the test of time. I think it's what separates us from the rest of the industry. When you think about um, how our bulls can stand the test of time, get the data, that's really, really important. So you're gonna hear us talk a lot about that today, but it was an extremely good day, no matter how you slice or dice it, rather than go through a lot of specifics, uh, I'll just kind of leave it at that. Uh, with that, Rick, have you got any updates? And I'm going to make sure that this uh, PowerPoint is working for us. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. We're uh, 72 plus hours into uh, a very hectic week, as it always is, uh, proof week. But I think when we uh, get right down to the nuts and bolts of it, uh, very thrilled once again for how the Select Sires Bulls and in our three different product lines have fared, uh, not only in the U.S., but uh, but around the world. I think, you know, continue to, to have some success stories. And, you know, that daughter data that you talk about, that really is the fuel that that fires the engine. It's it's what we look at on our proven sires and, and what how they have performed with real life data. And, uh, you know, it's what fuels the genomic predictions of the next generation. So you know, the more data we have, the more accurate our, our predictions can be and, and more reliable these bulls are and, and truly delivering those great results to, to our customers and, and our family uh, uh, farmer owned members uh, at Select Sire. So, you know, highlighting the proof round again is, is Helix. And, uh, you know, the bull that had a, a tremendous day uh, refuses to uh, relinquish his number one yield uh, while he's number two on the official TPI list. He now captured the number one spot uh, for overall TPI in the 97% reliable list. And uh, a bull would talk about daughters, uh, 3,600 daughters and, and uh, 3,600 daughters and 648 herds, um, you know, a truly reliable breed leading bull and, and couple that with a thousand uh, daughters scored now. Uh, beautifully balanced cows, uh, you know, no new information there. You, you see the daughters on the, the side of the screen there, just that beautiful dairy strength and balance and rib structure, uh, tremendous uttered cows. And uh, you couple that with uh, that extreme fat percentage at 123 pounds now and, and 64 pounds of protein. Uh, we love the Helix daughters. We love our Helix sons. And uh, uh, he is a a generational kind of bull that's going to have a major influence uh, on our program and certainly in customers herds around the world uh, from the great halo cow family uh, we're going to continue to talk about cow families uh, here at select sires uh, his dam just finished uh, second in the global cow of the year award at uh, holstein international and just another strong testament to that uh, great cow family and, and what he is uh, uh, what that family is providing to the breed through uh, the numerous sons in our program uh, his stable mate, uh, Welcome Silver Griff, 
uh, another bull that had a, a great all around day. And um, these two bulls have, you know, kind of paralleled themselves throughout their careers. And uh, now with daughter data, uh, Griff is slowly creeping in uh, on his paternal brother. Uh, now the number three TPI bull in the breed today, uh, the number five overall fat bull at 108 pounds of fat, a uh, nice combined fat and protein bull. Here's a bull that uh, uh, as A2A2 has been an outstanding fertility bull at uh, over three points on sire conception, which is uh, fueling a lot of his popularity. But uh, the other thing that's fueling that popularity is that customer satisfaction. Uh, farmers, breeders that are milking the Griff daughters have gone back and used him quite extensively. Uh, he's a bull that gives you that tremendous high wide rear udder, moderate size, yet good substance and strength and uh, another hugely popular bull for us. And uh, it's been kind of a race uh, between a few bulls to who's going to be our high selling bull of the year. Um, and a lot of that depends on who can make the most semen. Griff is doing an outstanding job and is now up to number two overall uh, on semen sales for us at, at Select Sires. So a bull that we're extremely proud to have as part of the family uh, and uh, comes from a great cow family and a great breeder herd and welcome stock farm. Uh, that G family has been around for, for decades and continues to, to rise to the top of that uh, tremendous herd of cows. Well, a bull that continues to rise in his ranks or popularity or uniqueness in the breed would be the next bull on the screen, 13454 Rocket Fire. This shows Super Sun. When I really started sorting data this week, folks, he is one of the most unique bulls we've seen in the breed for a very, very long time. Now with a lot of data, he's got 366 daughters in his proof. He's the number two milk bull in the breed at 2704. But what's really significant is milk and. When you look at him amongst the high milk bulls of the breed, when you're the number two milk bull and the number four productive life bull in the breed at 6.6, .6, and your break even on DPR, and you're in the top five for TPI and the top five for net merit, this bull really, really is in, in rare air. He's been a very popular bull for us as well. But a bull that I think when you think about those proven bulls that are going back and using, he's just this sheer source of pure production that we have in the industry. He's a high protein bull and a breed, breed leader there as well. He's A2A2. Tell a little story about the white cow on the top of the screen here. She's a cow that lives in my cattle partners, Mitch Brunig. And we pictured this cow. Uh, she's 83. He's a two year old, fresh again. Pictured her in October, and when it came up on social media, people were making some comments about she's really impressive, which she is. But here's the more impressive part of that cow. Her first three tests were 151, 161, and 142, and she's pregnant on first service and due back again. That's the kind of cows that Rocket Fire is making, and to me, it was what really makes them one of the most unique bulls in the industry. Next bull as well. Uh, we kind of forget about him sometimes because of all these other high bulls, but another top 10 proven bull of the breed is 148728 Odin, a bull with a different pedigree, being a, a, a hot rod son from a ransom daughter, from a robust. Traces back into McGutchen's cow family, back to Shadow May. That's where you see a little bigger, stronger kind of cows. That's what he's going to sire. Uh, the hot rods were very, very tall cows. But again, high yield and probably most significantly, he's double digits plus on components and in a lot of markets in the world we know that that's almost a must anymore they want those really high components and odin delivers on that it again has 581 daughters in his proof so he's got a lot of data he's a mastitis resistance rock star plus one five 107 on zoetis mastitis solid sire fertility and then on top of it he's an a2a2 sire again so in terms of an alternative pedigree a bull that's going to work on, on some of the Joe Super blood. He's going to work on the modesty blood. A lot of opportunities that Odin offers that he can do that with. And he's also an, an, an elite sex fertility bull as well. So whether it's conventional semen or sex, he does really, really well. Yeah, he is a unique bull. And another really unique bull for us is uh, 258H13531 uh, Totem. Uh, this Millington son uh, from the Planet Silk family uh, was just named uh, Holstein International Outcross Sire of the Year, and I think uh, very deserving uh, of that award when you look at his current evaluation and proof. Uh, he's the uh, 18th on our uh, TPI list this time. He's number two up in Canada for GLPI, so outstanding overall rank. 
with the daughter proven the performance information along in here. Uh, you see the nice linear uh, bar chart uh, that goes off to the right hand side, especially high for utter com composite. And you can see that on the daughters uh, in the right hand side of the screen as well. He's 1.89 in his utter composite here today, uh, coupled with 1.8 on, on tight. Uh, he, he's a bull that uh, gives you some nice fertility from a sire conception rate standpoint. Uh, you know, just a beautifully balanced all around daughter proven bull. Bull's been very popular for us in a program. And we'll talk a little bit more about the trifecta of, of, of mastitis resistance, but uh, very low somatic cell score, uh, high for zoetis mastitis, and also very high uh, for uh, CDBC mastitis resistance. And we'll have a little sidebar on mastitis resistance uh, here in a, in a few slides, but it's something that we're very focused on at Select Sires. We know how important it is for your dairies. Um, you know, how critical it is not to lose cows due to mastitis, lose milk in the bulk tank, or uh, compromise the longevity of those cows. So that's something that we're gonna, we'll speak to here a little bit later through the presentation on some other special bulls that are gonna really move the breed forward uh, in terms of mastitis resistance. Uh, and the last bull we'll uh, touch on here on some of the highlights uh, is 7H12928 Dino. Uh, he is a bayonet son from a tango, very good tango from a mogul. It goes back to the, the world famous uh, uh, fame slash raven cow family uh, that's that's been so successful for so many generations. Uh, this was one of our big movers of the day. Uh, had added uh, uh, several hundred daughters to his proof, moved up big time for net merit dollars as well for TPI. He's uh, now number 35th on the TPI list, uh, one of the highest fat bulls in the breed today for daughter proven bulls. Uh, over two points on type, high milk at 1,800 pounds of milk, and uh, in an A2, A2 sire as well. So Dino is one of those uh, bulls that really kind of grows on you, especially when you get a chance to get out and see them uh, in the flesh. Um, those frames definitely jump out at you along with those beautiful milky udders, particularly high and wide rear udder attachments. So uh, kind of a unique package here with that bayonet uh, sire uh, on the top side of the pedigree and then Tango, and then our one of our all-time customer satisfaction bulls, Mogul, on the bottom side. Uh, Dino is certainly bull. We're very excited about his performance here uh, with the December information. Well, we had several proof of grads. In fact, we had seven of them, and, and uh, four of those are top 100 TPI bulls, some high-type bulls we'll talk about. But we're really, really pleased with this proven group of grads. Some of them are new, going to be new to you because they weren't necessarily – Super samplers, and Rick's going to talk about one of those in this first bullet to buy. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. And, and it's an interesting group of graduates. I had a this is my second uh, video conference of the day, and when you look at these graduates, there really is something for everyone. Uh, whether you're looking for net merit, TPI, milk type, uh, this class really has it all and adds a lot of depth to our overall program. But seven H one three seven five three Divine is uh, is one of those different bulls. He's a, a Marty son. From a great cow family at King's Ransom, his dam's an 89-point uh, deductive, and then the the 94-point Dorsey Dextra, the foundation cow of the great family up there at King's Ransom. Uh, Divine's our new addition uh, for for those of you selecting on net merit. He's going to be a top 50 proven bull for net merit at uh, uh, $601. He's another one of those uh, trifecta mastitis resistant bulls for low somatic cell, great uh, mastitis scores for both evaluations there. Uh, another nice user-friendly linear profile, moderate framed uh, cows and, and really balanced in their other uh, improvement categories as well. So uh, something a little different to add into our, our high-end uh, net merit portfolio in this, uh, this early Marty Sun and, and King's Ransom M. Divine. Well, a couple of the bulls that I get to talk about again, like Rick said, something for everybody. And you start breaking these bulls apart. When I look through top ranking lists last night and see how bull fares, if he shows up on multiple, multiple lists of being a, a breed leader, you know you, we got a pretty good graduate. And that would be the case in 7H13727, Jeffrey. He's a Jedi son uh, from a Rogers. The next name's a Shamrock. And then the Man-O-Man -Man 2190 cow that goes back to Kevin Peck's uh, Ramos 1200, the 94-point Ramos, Wilkins family. So, again, a proven maternal line on this bull. But when he, he debuts as a number 17 TPI bull, he's a breed leader for uh, production at 1492, but 
top 20 in the breed for somatic cell score, top 10 in the breed for DPR. He's a great productive light bulb, ranks well there as well. And then, as I mentioned earlier, 200 daughters already milking. So he's got a lot of data and he's going to continue to add that data. This is a, this is a group I've seen some milking daughters. They were real happy with what I've seen on him. Again, fits the cheese markets because he is a, a BB Kappa casein bull. Uh, like I say, don't have any daughter photos of this bull yet, but I can tell you what I've seen thus far, I've been really happy with. Same thing goes for 7H13693 Benz. A franchise son, again, that goes back to a familiar cow family, goes back to the same cow family as Demerits. Behind that Montrose is an 88 point gold medal, Dan Merritt, a uh, numero uno daughter, then an excellent robust, and then Nicklin Oman Debbie was one of the original high genomic cows of the breed, and this family continues to deliver. This bull was known as a health and fitness specialist. He graduates as a health and fitness specialist. Extremely good productive life, high DPR, really, really sound udders, and again, A2A2. What makes this bull unique is that he was one of those bulls that uh, uh, did well for, on foreign indexes. He ranked well for RZG. He's made some high suns uh, over in Europe. So now as a proven graduate for that robot pro, I think he's going to do a great job in those robot herds. He meets that designation. Just very moderate sized cows, good components, high fertility, really happy with Ben's. But the last the, or the last new graduate you talked about, Rick, I think both of us are pretty fond of this bull. Whoops, I got one more. Crown, another bull that's top 30 TPI in the breed. One of the last Montrose sons we bring in, but maybe one of the best ones. This one here is a bull that's a breed leader for production. He's the 30th high TPI bull in the breed, top 50 for net merit, uh, just like Divine. 150 combined fat and protein, ranks him amongst the best of the breed. This bull is a Montrose from a Maurice daughter. The next M was a robust daughter that made like 2,200 pounds of fat big record. And then the next stand is a planet out of Cosmopolitan. And when I was doing some sorting this morning, that planet is the same anchor of the Cosmopolitan family that Conway comes back through. So this cow family obviously has performed really, really well for us. But a bull that uh, comes in is one of the last Montrose sons, but maybe one of the best ones. He's the second high TPI Montrose son in crown. Now let's talk about the bull that both of us like Rick and that's Casper. We are live, Kevin. We're live. Um, yes, Casper. Uh, I was asked this morning in the first conference call through some of these new graduates, and we haven't talked about them all yet. We'll get to a couple here later, but, you know, who's your favorite? And I said, well, that's – you can't ask a sire analyst that question. That's a little bit like asking a parent to tell you who their favorite child is. And if we weren't live, I'd tell you that answer for me, but uh, uh, this might be recorded somewhere. But Casper – is a, uh, a bull from our friends at Claynook. Uh, uh, hang time son from a uh, uh, Kalita Bombero is probably one of the best uh, high ranking genomic cows uh, uh, up in Canada during her heyday. Uh, here's a bull that uh, really liked the daughter reports. And, uh, you know, Kevin, if we were asked to place bets on who the the highest selling bull of these new graduates that was going to be. Uh, I probably wouldn't put much money on it because I'm not sure who it's going to be, but this bull uh, will be in the hunt. Um, great uttered cows. He's the number six bull in the breed today for utter composite at plus 2.7. Uh, you can see those daughter pictures on the right. That's a small sampling of what we've been receiving from, from our picture teams around the country and around the world. Uh, this bull has been a very, very popular selling genomic bull for us now and, and uh, happy to have him back in our proven sire lineup. Uh, he plays a key role in our genetic development program with some of his sons and, and ultimately grandsons in our program. Uh, he's another bull. Uh, you see those uh, green boxes on your screen for mastitis resistance, uh, low somatic cell, high DPR cows, and, uh, and then again, sire fertility at plus 2.4. Uh, this bull knows how to get him pregnant and then make the exceptionally good kind of cow, uh, the two-year-olds that you're going to love with just udders that are welded on, uh, shapely, symmetrical, high and wide in the rear udder, and nailed on in the fore udder. Uh, an exciting new addition to us for, for, for us in our Generations product line, and, and happy to have them back in here as a proven sire. Yeah, I'm just going to weigh in because we love this bull. Uh, <clears throat> echo everything Rick said. But this bull obviously has been very popular. I know we've got some of our friends from Italy on uh, the bull, very, very popular in Italy and with good uh, reason because of his uh, BB Kappa casein or KBB, according to them, 
fits that robot designation. His mother, I loved Kalita Bombero when I was working up in Eastern Canada, um, a real cow I really, really admired. And didn't have a lot of sons, but he's got a pretty significant one in magnitude. So I think that's important there. Rick, I'm just going to go through a couple. If you want to add in on these, I want to answer a couple questions before they go away from us. And Troy Westendorf, if you asked the question about any upcoming bull that's not proven that you're excited about, uh, that one's a pretty pretty easy um, answer, and that is uh, solution. The early solution daughters are calving, those frazzled grandsons. We're going to see those starting to, to – they're starting to calve. They're going to get data in April. But uh, are those the, those first ones that I've seen of the solution daughters, uh, very, very positive. Looking forward to what his April data may be. So that's – that's certainly an, an easy question to answer. You might add a renegade to that list too. We'll get to him in a minute. <laughs> and uh, then later on, uh, another question was from Daniel was, uh, was Bubba, um, he was high as a genomic bull. Um, see some daughters, a little bit of the Jedi effect is that influence on fat percentages. And, and as that trended down, that probably affected a lot of those Jedi sons that were those early high ranking genomic bulls. Uh, I think they're pretty sound cows are the ones I've seen, but over time, uh, a bull that doesn't rank very well on fats, pretty hard to, to come back to the proven lineup. And with Jeffrey and some of the other Jedi sons that came through, he just didn't seem uh, to be the, the, the one that can make it back to proven status. Uh, the last one uh, that I'll touch on here quick, Brian, glad to hear that you're up at four in the morning in Australia. Um, Inclusion of feed save and hidden livability in April. What are your thoughts on the traits? And I guess we knew this question was going to come up. I'm going to answer it pretty simply. There's a lot of data out there on feed saved in terms of uh, what are you looking for, or, uh, resources and that stuff. Uh, there's a wide range between the bulls. Um, and I just looked this morning. It's probably plus 400 to minus 400. But the one thing is we've studied this data is – the, the take home message is this trait should never be single trait selected for. It is best to be used in a multi trait selection index. The plan is to incorporate it in April. We'll see more as, as it gets closer to April Cyrus summaries, what the weightings and those kind of things are. But this is a trait that should never get looked at independently. I think it's best if it's in, an, in a total index uh, because I think if you go too far one way or the other, you probably wouldn't like the results on either end of it. Heifer livability. Uh, again, a trait that doesn't have a lot of spread to it. And again, I'll probably echo the same comment that it's probably best used in a multi-trait selection index. But Rick, do you have anything to add on that? No, I think you're exactly right. You know, it's uh, this trait's, uh, what, like I said, 72 hours old for a lot of us in terms of feed saved and heifer livability. So we got our first chance to look at the numbers uh, on Tuesday, just like everyone else. I think we're, uh, you know, evaluating, researching, looking at the data. Uh, we'll find out in you know, in a couple months what how they'll be incorporated, but they have to be incorporated in selection indexes. Um, you know, a big feed save number with uh, no production uh, doesn't do us any good, and uh, so we need to balance that out with overall production and, and put it into a selection index. And we'll, we'll see what the desirable weightings of that, that are going to be and how they affect bulls. Um, you know, in April, we'll certainly be talking about it a whole lot more if it does go into selection indexes and, and how that affects those. And uh, I'm sure you'll hear a lot more about it in April for sure. And, and probably a lot of information in between now and then will be available to you. But CDBC website's a great reference point uh, for some of the background information. And I think some of that uh, is available through Select Sires and in our networks as well to uh, kind of research and learn more about it. And then the other question I'm gonna let you comment on Rick, and that's on house. Got a question about house and bull you brought in and you know a lot about. <clears throat> yeah, he's, he's a bull. I think we're very excited about, uh, you know, where he is. He's now 300 and almost 400 daughters in his proof. He's uh, a bull over 2,600 on his uh, uh, TPI, you know, high component, moderate milk cows, uh, uh, over 100 classified daughters and, and really a very balanced overall profile. Uh, didn't quite make uh, the, the grade as far as a quote unquote graduate uh, here in the domestic market for us. But, uh, you know, a bull I think is going to be a nice bull to have in the pedigree and a bull that uh, really uh, stacks up very well to bulls that did earn the designation of graduates uh, when you look at his overall evaluation. So 
Uh, I think he's still uh, a bull to take a look at and, and uh, another nice hang time son that uh, has done very well for us. And I think done very well for, for farmers that did use them early. I think it'll be a lot like a sire, good customer satisfaction cows like the hang times. <clears throat> so let's move into a couple more graduates and, and uh, you know, I'd be remiss if, you, if it didn't talk about a couple high tight bulls. And I was really excited to see all of us were really to, to see what's on our showcase program, what happened. I just want to start out with it. If you haven't seen uh, the new showcase brochure, uh, either from your sales rep, uh, your technician, uh, it's out on the new SelectSire's website. Uh, you can access it there. Our communications team did a marvelous job uh, with this piece. And, and I think it underscores where we want to go in the showcase program. And our tag this year was focused on family. And for a couple of reasons, a crazy year like this in a global pandemic, I think we all rally around to our family and, and, and get those closest to us. The other side is that also melds so well with the philosophy of this program is that it's about families, maternal lines, uh, consistent theme has just been the backbone of this program is finding the right bulls from the right maternal lines to add into the program to add some value. And so, as I mentioned, we've got two proven bulls that added data this time. And again, good amounts of it. And the first one is 7H13730, our favorite undenied, been one of our most popular uh, genomic young bulls over the last couple of years. And this bull didn't just add a couple. He added a boatload of data with 371 daughters in his production proof, about the same as what he was as a young sire, but 129 daughters scored. And as I scanned the internet and kept seeing very good daughter after very good daughter, very good daughter, I was pretty excited about what we were seeing. And then all of a sudden some photos came in and he made a lot of those pretty heifers like uh, under that Google there at the top of the screen. Uh, a couple of these uh, milking ones now from out in your area, Rick, one from King's Ransom and the other one from Jonathan and Alicia Lamb. Um, he's making the kind that I think the genomic prediction said that he should. And I think that's the important part about this good a uh, proven graduate now in the showcase program is that he it's the daughters are confirming what the prediction told us. This bulls being A2A2. A2. I'm sure Todd's not watching because they're classifying today at our favorite, but obviously unlimited, still in the herd, still adding to her lifetime credits. Um, just a marvelous, marvelous cow. It was one of the high type cows of the breed and, and she's lived it. She's crowding into 200,000 pounds a lifetime. She's 94 points, she's 96 in the udder. You know, just a great, great new proven graduate in Undenied. And I think that he wears that moniker and he's number four in the breed with progeny. And the only bull that we have proven that's higher is King Doc. And we all know the story on him. The other new graduate on the type side, getting just getting going, but pretty excited again as well at 7H13839 tattoo. This crushed son from Mike and Julie Duckett goes back to treasure. Great cow family. This was one of my goals originally was to get a son of treasure uh, early in, in my tenure as a sire analyst. And Tattoo came along and I'm really happy that now with milking progeny, again, he's confirming what he was supposed to be. He reminds me of his mother. They're tall, clean bone, dairy heifers with amazing udders. That's what his data says. He ranks in the top 16 bulls of the breed for type at 2.63, just getting going. But again, you can see the daughter's photo. They look great. Uh, the cow on the bottom there just won 88 points as a two-year-old last Friday. She was second at Circleville uh, in the Summer Junior 2 class. So he, he's making these kind that we were pretty excited about. But more importantly with Tattoo is, again, we're going to sound like broken records on mastitis resistance. And Rick knows that if I really believe in something, you probably hear about it more than once. And uh, in the case of Tattoo, where you're a breed leader, uh, top 20 breed bull in the breed for somatic cell score, 3.8 on CDCB mastitis, 108 on Zoetis mastitis. This is the right, right bull to have out there. And we're really excited about the tattoo. The other thing that I'm, we're not going to talk about Doc specifically today, he is going to end up being the number one unit sale bull at Select Sires this year. But a couple of bulls I want to talk about in tandem, because these next few bulls I talk about, every one of them in the top 50 of the breed for genomic type. And they've got a common theme to them. I'm going to talk first to the bull on the right in 250H15322 Hanley. I uh, was always a big fan of, of this cow family and the hankers. And when we had the chance to make that doc daughter as a heifer, so a bull named Alvarez, who was in the 250H program, did well in Canada. We got what we hoped. High type, A2A2, 
They had a little slope to the rump, which is something you can continue to hear from folks. Just thought, boy, we got a bull that checked every box. But six weeks later, we got another bull. And his name is 507H15325 Hanats. About six weeks older than, Han than Hanley. When you get a bull that's almost 2,900 GTPR, 119 combined fat and protein, the number four bull of the breed for genomic type at 3.87, over three in utter composite, great on mastitis resistance, A2A2 and BB, that's why this bull is sexed because he is truly a special, special bull. He'll be sexed only probably until next April, uh, but just an exciting bull that, that we're gonna use as a sire father again uh, to continue this, but a neat deal to be able to already have a dot grandson with two uh, bulls with semen available. Goes back to the great hanker cows. I said, she was just named Holstein International's Global Cow of the Year. And we're pretty proud of the fact that we've got that relationship with seamers that we have so many of these good bulls from that family that are coming in. And the mother of Hanans and Hanley is there on that on this uh, screen there too. She just won 89 points as a two-year-old. And she is an amazing young cow. And she's a full sister to these three bulls, Hancock, Handsome, and Hanford. All five of these bulls are in the top 50 of the breed for genomic type. And I get the question a lot about these three bulls. Which one do you like better? I think they're all unique in their own way, and that's why we have. Hancock's the A2A2 bull that's um, got a little more extremity on the type, makes the fancy calves like you see pictured there above. Handsome's a little more production, and he's a little more CFP, and his rump angle is a little better. And Hanford is the bull that's got that high, high type and the fertility specialist. He's the one, and he fits the robot pro designation. So there's some unique things about each of these three sons, back to Mobile Hanker, Global Cow of the Year, but they really anchor the current showcase program. But Rick, there's a book just released that I'm pretty excited about. I'm going to let you talk about him because it's from your area. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. That's uh, 7H15477 Derby. Uh, he's a, a new prefix to the world of, of showcase selection. Uh, Welcome has been around for a long, long time. Uh, uh, probably still the only herd to have bred the number one Guernsey and the number one Holstein bull. And now uh, we're venturing into the extreme tight market. Uh, I think this is what happens when you uh, you grow up and you have children and you, you want to breed some show heifers and show calves. You invest in a great cow family uh, and start to breed a few of these and, and, uh, and uh, Bill and, and, uh, the family there at Welcome has certainly uh, hit a nice one here. Uh, Derby is, uh, you know, has that household name behind them, Chamomile. Uh, everybody loved going to World Dairy Expo and, and, and seeing Chamomile and how she was going to turn out that year and how she was going to perform. You know, she's a customer satisfaction cow and, and a fan favorite, and she's the anchor of this Derby bull. Uh, he's an Excalibur son, so a paternal brother to Hanans you just talked about, Kevin. Uh, from a King Doc, and you knew we were going to talk about King Doc today. Maybe not directly, but you know we love uh, we love King Doc. There's a question on the on the screen here from Daniel, uh, you know about uh, fact they're calving in docks and they love them. They're beautiful cows, and you know they, he's the best bull going right now, bar none. They're just great, and we're lucky to have his influence in our program. Um, but this particular doc was a really high genomic type heifer that uh, we played around with a little bit. Dan was an excellent doorman, then chamomile. Uh, here's a bull that, you know, you break down that linear profile. Uh, you love uh, uh, the rump angle right at zero. Uh, tremendous width. You love the leg side view right at zero. Uh, everything else off to the right and the teat length not too short. Uh, this bull, I think, is going to prove to be a very popular and very exciting new bull and uh, and it didn't come by mistake. You know, he was bred to be in this program and, and uh, we were very excited to get those early genomic results uh, in, in tell us that this bull definitely was going to be a, a showcase selection bull and uh, in a, a nice new addition to us in, in that, that lineup for us here today. Uh, we're going to shift gears then a little bit and jump into the next portion of our, uh, our program and, and that is the next gen program, a uh, program that's rolling out very well and adding members every day around the world and uh, it uh, should be uh, I would think an influx of, of requests for new memberships with this first bull we're going to talk about, uh, 7H15167 Game Day. 
Here is the Big Al Sun from the, the Good Plus glow Blowtorch. Uh, next dam is the Yoder and the dam of Frazzled. So uh, here is a big time genomic cow family that has delivered time and time again. And, and game day uh, is going to set the mark in the industry for breed leading genetics. Uh, he is the number one TPI bull easily, hands down, available today uh, to purchase semen on. Uh, he's a bullet we've used very heavily as a sire father. Um, and yet, quite honestly, only started using this bull six months ago. So uh, this bull is being offered very early to our members. Um, and I think a, a great ability to move your head forward genetically with this bull. Low somatic cell score, uh, nice utter composite on this bull, huge DWP bull, uh, wellness trait dollar bull, high combined fat and protein, excellent percent improver. Uh, very exciting to get this bull out into the market to, in rolling uh, in a great addition uh, to the next gen lineup. Well, I'm pretty, we all love game day and use them heavy as a sire father, tracing their back to Legacy's cow family. But the next bull uh, is pretty special as well, and that's 7H15 uh, AO85 Parfait. Well, we released the next gen program in May, won't be two years old here till next February just starting to get his first calves and they're ranking really really well he's going to be a hitter it looks like uh, 3007 on his gtpi 150 of combined patent protein renegade delta lambda 91 point denver then back to the same cow family as petty and back to the Peyton family at welcome stock we've been talking about here recently and the interesting part about this bull is he traces back to the p family at, at uh, welcome stock both top side and bottom side in his pedigree. And that's what makes this bull just a little bit unique. He looks like a select sire's bull. He's got the type, he's got the production, he's got the fitness, he's got the casings, and there's his mother standing in the, in the barn at Seamers's, and she's an 87.2 year old, one of my favorites at the barn. This is gonna be a special bull, and, and uh, we're really excited to see what he's gonna do. Along with this bull here, 14H15223 Conway, Talked about him a little bit uh, on the, through Crown's family there. Again, this renegade son, uh, it's clicked about near every box, been far and away the most popular next-gen bull the last six months. Appreciate your patience on the bull. We're pushing this little guy probably to his biological limit. He won't be two years old until March, and we've moved an awful lot of semen on this bull, but we know that supply and demand, uh, we'll get it to you. Just got to be patient. Both healthy, doing fine. Well, you've got a renegade out of a granite, out of a Draco, out of a 92-point mogul that was one of those best 10 ever cows at Sandy Valley. Back to the Cosmopolitans. And you look at all the things in boxes he clicks. This is really a special bull as well. A bull we've used extensively as a mating sire. Don't have any uh, calves with results back yet, but we're pretty excited what we're going to see. And you see the bull. He's a big, broad bull, just like renegade himself, but a really exciting bull as well. Well, another new addition uh, here uh, to the Next Gen program is 14H15250 Heliogen. Uh, as the Halo family strikes again uh, with another exciting bull for us in our program, you can see the bull in, in his dam on the right-hand side of the, the screen, a, a black, stylish, well-balanced bull. And then his dam, uh, the 87-point reason that is just a tremendous, tremendous cow. Uh, welded on udder, dairy strength, all the things you want to see in a two-year-old and a cow that uh, has transmitted exceptionally well. And this is uh, one of her most exciting sons, certainly with semen available here today. He's going to be a top 25 TPI bull at uh, just short of 3,000 TPI, low somatic cell, big DPR bull. Nice thing he's going to lengthen those teats out just a little bit uh, with a little positive on the teat length side of things. Uh, he's another uh, outstanding mastitis resistance bull. And for our friends in Europe, uh, he, this happens to be a bull that scores extremely well uh, for overall RZGs and one of the breed leaders for that particular selection index also. So certainly expect uh, a little bit of added interest uh, from our from our friends in Europe on this particular bull. Uh, the next bull is 7H15344 Mowgli. Uh, from the Prasovsky family in Wisconsin, uh, another legacy son from a very good flagship daughter, and then an excellent mogul uh, that goes back to the delicious family uh, that's been so popular and dominant in our world of breeding here for the last uh, 10 or 15 years. Uh, here's a bull 
huge CFP bull, 162 pounds, big time percent fat improver at 20.22 percent fat. Uh, another bull that hits that trifecta of low somatic cell and, and high mastitis resistance. Um, a bull we've used as, an, as a mating sire and, and getting them out to the market here uh, as an early release into our next gen program. And, and I think certainly going to be a, a nice popular addition uh, to that program. <clears throat> Another new release bull, uh, we released three new bulls into the next gen program. And in this bull, 14H15455 Massey. Uh, is the third of those three bulls. Uh, this bull is extreme. Uh, he's an A2A2 sire. He's a bull that comes from a great cow family. It traces back to our Shottle Mindy cow family through a guarantee and a Delta and a, a snowman. Uh, high percent fat at plus 0.25. This is a bull that we identified uh, kind of as a futuristic kind of a sire to really change the breed and change the population. We've used him as a mating sire and uh, he's a big DWP bull, but when you look at those somatic cell, mastitis resistance from a CDBC standpoint at 5.1, that's the number one mastitis resistant bull on the active AI list. It's the lowest somatic cell score on the active AI list at 2.41. Zoetis traits substantiate those evaluations at 110 on mastitis resistance. And when you think about where we're going as, uh, as in managing our herds today, uh, with heavy use of sex semen, heavy use of, of beef semen, managing our heifer inventories and taking it another step further in, in trying to lower or manage our cull rates with the idea of making our herds older and more mature, mastitis resistance is going to become an increasingly important trait. And that's why we're really focusing on it. That's why we're mentioning in our presentation, because let's face it, Older cows have more susceptibility to mastitis. And if we can uh, predispose them genetically to resist that characteristic, uh, you know, we're trying to get ahead of the curve, especially as we move our herds potentially to, to older herds and more mature cows and second, third, fourth, fifth lactation cows. Uh, we want to give them the ability to resist that mastitis uh, a little bit better if we can and have you do everything you can environmentally. Um, and a bull like this, I think, is a, is a game changer uh, in terms of, of uh, helping us to move the breed in the right direction. And I'll just add one more thing there, Rick. I think the other thing that we see in a lot of situations across the country, at least in my travels, is different in housing. As more and more digesters go in and people start using alternative bedding sources, that's going to only increase whether it's recycled sand or separated solids. That's going to add to this. And I, couldn't be more passionate about the same as you, that this is a big thing that, that we really are putting and have been for quite a while, putting this mastitis resistance emphasis on our bulls. Yeah, uh, and another next gen bull here is 14H15265 Legacy Tua. Uh, you know, we mentioned Legacy a few times here this morning with the influence that he himself has had and, and now his sons are getting an opportunity to have uh, extremely excited about this bull. This bull is all about fat, 121 pounds of fat plus 0.35% fat and double digit plus on percent protein. So for uh, breeders looking for high component milk, this bull is going to move you in the right direction there. If you want high component, the right casein milk, he's A2A2, he's BB on Kappa casein, another bull with that trifecta for mastitis resistance. So a little bit of a, a unique pedigree bull here. It's Hard to imagine that, uh, you know, select sires and our art program have been around this long, but there's actually five generations of SSI prefixes behind the development of this bull. Um, so when you get legacy kite expresso and it goes back through uh, kind of an interesting bull to realize that we're already five generations deep in some of these bulls in the development. And this speaks to the generation interval and shortening that down and, and moving genetics as fast as we can uh, and then backfilling it with real data, as we talked about before, uh, get, with getting these cows in milk, in production, in commercial real life herds, getting them classified and getting all the data there to fill those pedigrees in. So uh, another another strong addition and, and member, not addition, but member of our, uh, our next gen program here in TUA. Well, Elite Genomic Health and Young Sires, want to talk about some bulls that you guys can get from your technician that are on the trucks, and want to just mention that I am going to mention on one piece here. Uh, uh, just had uh, 
uh, Peck and Oak Dairy talking about the Ronalds. I don't have a slide on Ronald, but he's still our number one red factored bull. Has a huge influence in our program. Uh, we've got several red Ronald sons that we'll be releasing in 2021, including some of the highest bulls in the breed. So glad you like him. He's one of my favorites as two. Uh, when you have a high ranking red factored bull who also has 12 excellent dams, it's always nice to see and goes back to the Roxy Cow family. Uh, the first one that I'll talk about in the uh, Genoma Young Bulls, Rick, you mentioned them before, talked about who we could be excited for in April. And the soul may come to their damn it. Dang it. The 250H14134 Renegade. This bull uh, has been one of our most popular young sirs. Started his career in next gen. Now he's out in uh, uh, general population, has been since August. Truly a game changing kind of bull. When you look at a bull with an alternative pedigree, he was last year's outcross sire of the year. And for good reason, being a Jalta Oak from a Millington, from a Da Vinci, and then traces through a different fork in the Mindy's. At 2907, those good production traits, high DPR, right casings, lengthens teats. Again, a linear pattern that's just balance. You look at where the, everything sits in the right spot, not extreme in anything. Uh, that's what made him so appealing. And what we used him so heavily as a sire father. Now the good news is that some of the earliest daughters that Mark Kern had created in the art program are starting to calf. And the other photos I show you there on the screen are some of the earliest renegade daughters that are calving. Had one of them go 83 points last week. So they're certainly um, doing a great job. We're excited about this bull, huge influence. Uh, he's a bull that when it comes to recommending bulls for people to use, he's usually at the top of my list. The next bull in the case of, uh, uh, you talked about a moment ago, those sons, Rick, his legacy, uh, 14H, 14250, appropriately named. He was one of Charlie's last bulls. That's why he's CW legacy. Uh, this present son, uh, he's going to be the big uh, guy on the top of the hill in terms of his influence uh, from the high net merit, moderate stature. For those who are looking for components, he just ticks every one of those boxes on top of extreme mastitis resistance. Like his sire, Frazzled, he's a low cell score bull, high mastitis resistance in both Zoetis and CDCB. The fact that he's A2A2 like his sire, he's just added to that gene frequency uh, in our population and, and just really, really excited about what he's going to do. Uh, massive influence and now readily available. He has been in next gen for his career to this point. He is now going to be readily available uh, with the December, December sire summaries. One of my favorite legacy sons that came up this time is a bull that had the chance to go acquire out in California, Hilmar D. Legacy Warner, Warner 7H15306. This legacy son's out of a very good IMAX. You can see pictured there in a couple of views. She was just fresh on my last trip out there in, in March, and I loved the cow. Knew she was going to be a very good cow. She didn't disappoint. The next dam is a 91-point Delta that's just one of the best cows at, at Hilmar. And this bull took a nice jump this time. He went up on uh, both TPI and net merit. Uh, you look at his production figures, 148 on combined fat protein. And again, great on his mastitis traits, 2.4 on CDCB and 2.68. And he's A2A2. Uh, but I like bulls who I like their mothers, and this is definitely one of those bulls. The other legacy son that had a great day and available and a new release here in, in December is Link, 14H15274. Goes back to the same cow family as Rubicon. His mother's a medley and then a Delta. And then that cow below pictured that's Sandy Valley Robust Ruby, the mother of Rubicon. So it goes back into the planet Sapphires. 141 pounds of CFP. Again, terrific mastitis scores, high productive life. That's what the legacy sons are going to deliver. So we're really, really excited about this one. Yeah, and, uh, you know, talk about uh, another bull that has just recently released uh, from the Next Gen program, as was well Legacy, is 7H14-5201 Moonshiner. Uh, Tahiti Sun uh, from an 88-point flagship uh, goes back to the, uh, the the Goldwyn Missy Cow family. It's kind of taken the extreme show world into the uh, modern end genetics with, with Tahiti flagship and Delta. Beautiful full pedigree bull here. Uh, bullets, 1,400 pounds of milk, high udder composite, uh, 
you mentioned Kevin, you like bulls who you like their bull, their mothers. And, and this bull certainly fits the bill there too. Uh, he's a, not that we talk about sire calving ease a lot, but he is 1.3. So for those that are still using some thresholds for sire calving ease, he's certainly a bull that should, should be on your radar uh, as far as continuing to lower the trend on, on a difficult bursts. Another bull that scores pretty well for our friends in Europe. I think he's 160 RZG now, uh, so certainly scores very well for that international index in addition to his, his good overall scores here for TPI net merit. So uh, Moonshiners have been one of my favorite bulls. Uh, I love the mother and uh, like a lot of things about this bull. And, and I think his popularity now in the open market with conventional and uh, in sex semen should continue to, to drive this bull sales forward. Yep. He was an easy bull to use as a sire father. That's for sure. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, another new graduate or release bull for us here is Expedite 14H 15432. Uh, another bull who's uh fits that category of mothers you like. Uh, this uh, uh, 4975 Yule cow at Joel Crawls is a, a beautifully open rib, deep, milky kind of a cow uh, following that same pattern as the Meridian Iowa cow, the grand dam of this bull. Uh, Expedite's bull, we've used some as a mating sire. He may be the highest bull available in the breed outside of any restricted or control program. Uh, he'll have conventional and sex semen available right out the gate. Um, he has a full brother expectant uh, that's a slightly higher that we've been using as a mating sire and will be released here in the coming months as well. So two, two high ranking legacy sons uh, that we're very excited from from Furnace Hill. Uh, mastitis resistance once again uh, hits checks all the bars there with the, those mastitis scores uh, in A2A2. Um, we talk a lot about the influence of legacy, but it's certainly nice to have some non-legacy blood uh, in the program. And, and Forte Muscles is one of those bulls from our Generations product line, Forte out of a Burley. Burley now the number one overall TPI bull and, and fortunate to have accessed some of his genetics on the maternal side of this bull's pedigree. He's a frazzled, renegade free bull. So some nice calling cards there of where and how to use this bull moving forward. Uh, mastitis resistance is outstanding. Caseins, A2A2, BB Kappa casein, uh, nice linear profile. Uh, and another bull that's, uh, that we've certainly tried to use a little bit as a mating sire and have some pregnancies coming. Uh, the next bull, and, and uh, going back to some Helix bloodlines here, is Alphabet. Uh, certainly very proud of all of our Helix sons. Uh, Alphabet continues to be one of the real popular Helix sons for us. Uh, he kind of is cut from the same image, if you will, big time milk protein, fat bull, uh, high feed efficiency bull at 217, uh, point and a half on udders, point and a half on type, uh, and then a, a really solid SCR bull is too well. So getting into the point where we had used Alphabet uh, 10, 11 months ago as a mating sire and, and starting to see some nice returns on some Alphabet sons that'll be uh, coming forward forward to us uh, here 12 months from now. So uh, a nice, nice contributing bull to our overall program. Well, another new graduate that came out this time and, and different from Legacy was kind of what we wanted to finish up with here today is 7H15471 ZZ Top. This renegade son, he is a protein specialist. And I there's nothing more that I like to see in a bull when he's got great indexes in a lot of different areas, but high TPI, but having high CFP with high protein. I think the combination of those two things is just so critical as we move forward and having both high fat and high protein and a bull like ZZ Top really does that. He's 1,900 pounds of milk. He's 71 of protein, as I said. He's good on productive life. He hits all the boxes on mastitis resistance again. He's BBN kappa casein, uh, moderately tall, right-sided linear. Just a lot of things to like about this bull being a renegade from a Zippet P, and they were great cows. They're just a, a bull that uh, – we lost too soon to be a permanent graduate, but he, they were really nice cows. And then the next Sam, back to Rick's area and, and down to the Joneses in Virginia, Joe Superdaughter, that's very good. So it's a great maternal line. He's got high production. I like this bull an awful lot because of what he does different there. And then kind of finishing up again with a group of bulls. And there's certain cows, and again, you, you know, when you love a cow, you love to see her sons. And Achiever Paula is a, a cow that we have in the art program. She just went very good last week. She traces back to Samurai and Slam Dunk and, 
And, and that cow family, uh, back to 98, 82, she has 11 sons in our program to date. But I wanted to highlight a couple of them because they give you those alternatives to the, to the frazzled bloodlines. So when you look at a bull like Renegade or Rashan, he's a renegade from Achiever Paula. And the high production, 29, they're all over 2,900, but he's kind of the production bull uh, in, in, in terms of these brothers, but has all those mass titus traits. Then you look at a bull like Cascade Reed, and he's the component bull and a high type bull. It's over two points on type and over two points in other composite. And so he has his uniqueness in over 2,900. And then Sheik Ascension, uh, Sheik is a Sanderson son, so that traces a little bit through the Yoder out of Mindy. And then you put Paul on the bottom side, 113 pounds of fat that this bull offers, and A2, A2, and BB Kappa casing. So it's one of those things that when you look at all of these bulls and see what they offer, we love the fact that Legacy is having a huge influence. We love the fact that we're going to have a lot of sons. Of them. But you also need to have something that, that is unique. And then our goal in sire development is always trying to skate to where the puck is headed and what bull is going to be the next right bull to fit on what's out there. And we were lucky enough with a bull like Renegade to come along at the right time to, to meet with the fires of blood. And now we've got some of these out of Achiever Daughters, which we know he's a great source of fat. It just kind of fits everything together in the right spot. So we're really, really happy about that. So now those are the bulls that we were going to present to you today. If you guys have any further questions, we'd be happy to, to answer them and, and, uh, and just keep the discussion going. Um, the, uh, uh, the one question I see there, uh, Lyndon, uh, that's a great point that you brought up on, on the mobile app. It is. If you stay tuned to the end of the presentation here, there's going to be a video about the new mobile app. And yes, it will update after every sire summary. And uh, probably will update in your app store and when your apps update. But we're really excited about the app. Um, we're very excited about the new website. I think our new website uh, is, is top shelf Cadillac out there. Uh, there's a tutorial if you go through it and videos to teach you how to use the Sire search engines and those types of things. But uh, I know in terms of just us on a daily basis doing our job, uh, sorting bulls has never been easier than the, than the new website and, and very, very happy with what it's doing. So we're glad you like it, Lyndon, because we do too. And David, I think we probably caught that to you earlier that next gen and uh, legacy is off of the next gen program now, so he he will be readily available. So. We'll hold it here for a second to see if there's any other questions, but uh, I'm sure that you echo my sentiments, Rick, that we really um, appreciate uh, all the business that you as our customers have done over 2020. We, we hope that uh, uh, you have a great uh, 2021 and that the world becomes a much nicer place. This is a question for you, Rick, because he's one of your bulls and we both love this bull. I'll let you talk on Doc. Uh, I think the question is on doctor. So I'm assuming you're talking about Helix doctor. Uh, uh, and he is a bull that I am very excited about what he's going to be. And uh, they should be calving here very shortly. I've not seen any milking yet. He doesn't have any daughters uh, in his proof yet, but uh, he's a bull I've talked about for a couple of years now. Um, you know, checking all those boxes. He's uh, got a great linear profile high fat test, good protein, um, you know, DPR, awesome, awesome uh, sire conception rate. And then, you know, at the time, uh, calving ease was pretty special too. So from uh, just breeding good cows and cows are going to pay the bills from the standpoint of putting milk, fat, protein in the tank, breeding back easy, getting cows pregnant. Uh, he's been on my favorite list for a while. Love, love his mother. I remember looking at the dam one day, sandwich between two 95 point moguls uh cleo and cleavage and uh yoder Dallas, while she's only 90 she certainly held her own against those two powerhouse guys cows at 95 so you, you hit one of my favorites there yeah and uh i'll touch on copycat rick and you can touch on houdini uh yeah. copycat had a really good day uh very very Solid run. He moved up a little bit, actually, relative to the 
to the changes in the industry as he continues to add more data. Uh, like Rick likes, Dr. Copycat to me has always been uh, one of my favorites. Um, that was a special load of bulls that we picked up when Copycat and Farrell were on the same load and both of them having a big influence. Um, his mother, the JC, is just a really, really nice cow. So he's got that alternative pedigree. I think he's one of Jedi's best sons. And as you see the daughters, they've got beautiful letters. They're maturing really well. Uh, so I'm a big fan of Copycat because, again, he traces back into the Cosmopolitans through a slightly different fork uh, that Sandy Valley had invested in. But I always really like uh, Copycat. Yeah, and uh, Jim had a question or made a comment here. He had his first heifer by Houdini this morning. And, um, you know, you're one of you're on the front end, just like everyone else is still a, a relatively young bull. But, you know, you, I, this bull you love. Helix, Joe Super, Mogul, um, from a confidence standpoint, just doesn't get much better than that. Three bulls that have done extraordinarily well and made positive contributions to the breed. You know, Houdini still looks really good. And it, 60 pounds of protein today, we didn't touch on protein that much, but the milk checks for protein this fall have been pretty darn good and uh, doesn't always get reflected in some of the selection indexes. But anytime you could add a little extra protein into the breeding program to make sure you're cattle have genetic potential to make it when the market's right to make it, uh, I think uh, is certainly a good game plan. So um, I love the pedigree behind this bull and certainly the sire stack. And I think maybe both of us could comment on these next couple of questions about rocket fire. Are you using them on Helix or using them on Montrose? I'd say yes. Uh, I'm a big fan of using, I think the only place you don't use rocket fire is probably on Frazzle himself because they're both Joe Super Sons. But the uniqueness that Rocket Fire has, that high productive life, the break even EPR, and that exceptional milk, and with a slightly different uh, maternal line and sire stack, he's really a bull that I would use. The old Dick Chichester theory was, who should I use them on cows in heat? Uh, I would tell you, use them on all cows in heat except frazzle dogs. Ditto. And uh, then another question from Ana. Uh, how's Diamondback doing? Fantastic. We, I, I got to see the bull in July when we were over at Westby. Him and I are sort of buddies. Um, so I got to bond a little bit with the old guy. He's doing well. Uh, his daughters continue to, to do well. He's, a, he's actually, his type rankings continue to improve in the breed. I think he's probably the most predictable apple of all of them. I think you kind of know what you're going to get with him. He, he, he makes really balanced cows that they make them great, both red and black. And so we're, uh, it, it's a pretty humbling deal that uh, the first bull that I got to ink on the, on the, uh, the contract was diving back and, and he's done pretty well. Yeah. I, I see a question here from Steven about Parfect uh, going to the UK and, you know, until as long as he's in the next gen program, we're going to have to wait and find out what the duration of that is going to be. Uh, I, I don't have an exact time frame or an answer to give you there, but uh, uh, I'd say it'll be a while based on his genetic contribution, based on the uh, popularity within that program. So uh, stay tuned, check with your representative, and, and we'll keep you informed the best that we can. But um, uh, he's certainly both. We're enjoying the, the success that he's had and, and had a tremendous calf come back this week. So it could be a while, but but keep asking. Uh, we're happy to get him to you as soon as he gets uh, uh, available outside of the next gen program. Absolutely. Well, we are at an hour and three minutes, Rick, and we wanted to be at an hour. But when you get good questions, it's great to continue the conversation. But I think for today, uh, you and I better get back to our duties and let these folks get back to their chores and that stuff. But I want to thank you again for joining us today on Facebook Live. As I said, there'll be a short video as we finish up here. Uh, but we want to wish you just the happiest of holiday seasons. Uh, best wishes for 2021. Uh, we're all looking forward to a uh, uh, maybe a more normal uh, life, and, and hopefully it's right around the corner. But everything's normal for you guys because you get up and milk your cows every day. Uh, and so we want to thank you for all you do. Thank you for all you for select sires and, and best wishes. So thanks again. Thanks, guys, and, and uh, enjoy the holidays, and happy to be with us, and enjoy the little show. Introducing the Select Sires mobile app. Select Sires mobile is an advanced tool for your sire search needs. 
The app includes several features, including a quick search and advanced search to quickly find the dairy bowls of your choosing. After the initial download, it can function completely offline, so it goes wherever you go. Advanced filters allow you to narrow your search to help you meet the exact breeding goals of your herd. The favorites function allows you to add sires to lists you create. Then share your favorites, quick and easy. Download Select Sires Mobile today in your device's app store for use on mobile phones and tablets. Select Sires Mobile, for you, for your herd.